We're so happy to see you. Hello, future bestsellers. It is time to do the live stream. And we we are so excited to be here with you guys today. I feel like this is probably the first time that some uh, some of our folks are just like waking up after craziness <laughs> at the, you know, the end of NaNoWriMo. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but we had our little planner stream the other night. And uh, and I always like to you know plan out my writing goals and things like that. But I also really like to plan out my um, sort of my promotional targets. And so like how you know what things I want to focus on for the upcoming year. Mm -hmm. And so that is what we're going to be talking about today in the <coughs> chat parts. All the promo stuff that we have and marketing plans that we have. You know, kind of uh, what we're thinking about for 2021. So before I start just rambling on, let's introduce our awesome awesome group here today let's start with michelle tell us all about you hey guys i'm michelle schusterman i'm a middle grade and young adult author and my youtube channel is writing workshops and traditional publishing talk all right very nice and carol brown is here today sitting alone with my camera sorry about that <laughs> Hi, my name is Kara Brown. I'm an urban fantasy author. I'm also the owner of Mad Raptor Productions, which is what I'm trying to squeeze into my screen. <laughs> mm, uh, nice. Um, I'm here today to actually work on this novel that has plagued me for the better part of a year and a half called Ten of Brownies. So, um, and I'm super excited to talk about the marketing chat because a lot of my marketing efforts haven't really been focused on me. It's been focused on my authors. So maybe thinking about me should be something that I do right now. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Well, we already have, let me just say this, Carol Brown like got things rolling today um, really early on in the chat. So let's say hi to our chat friends, our chatty chatters. So Melanie's here. Hello, Melanie. We're so excited you're going to get some words in with us too. Happy Wednesday back. Carol having a little snack this morning before we get started. A little I breakfast. Had I had to eat. <laughs> We we were okay. So we were talking about right before we came out. We were talking about it's freaking cold in Florida right now. Like it froze. It was like thirty two degrees last night, which oh is God. very unusual. I know. Yeah. I almost have to wear socks over my flip flops. So, <laughs> so anyway, I was not prepared. We had to turn the heater on for the first time, which is always crazy. And um, and I was saying I'm going to make chili today after the live stream. Mm. And I'm not a chili fan, but I found this amazing recipe uh, from Sugar Spun Run, which is like a YouTube channel and a blog. And this chili is like amazing. And I was telling Carol, I think the secret ingredients are bacon and brown sugar. Oh, yeah. And yep. she gave me a great idea on how to substitute the brown sugar, but I'm like, no thanks, I'll take the brown sugar. <laughs> oh, no, it's just like, I love eating chili and I like trying different things. And there's, and you don't have to use the the recommended substitute because um, brown sugar does add like a different la layer of depth to it and it kind of brings out more of the meat flavor. Um, but it's really the carbonation that you're kind of looking for because that carbonation makes it spice and it's also compatible with like the cheese and the other stuff that I could really talk about this for a while. <laughs> I know, right. So I don't know if you guys know this, but Carol is a trained chef. So yeah. Right. So I'll, at some point I should, I should definitely try that. It will not be today though. Today I'm all about the bacon and the brown sugar. So you definitely it. need to add bacon, but you, you have mm. to cook it first. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Melody's here. Oh, she says, hey, Carol, which we I just said literally she was here earlier. So, all right, a little back and forth. That's good. Spence is here. Hello, Spence. We're so happy to see you today. Melanie's back and forth. She's going to have a little snack. Maya's here. Hey, Maya. We're so glad to see you today. All right, hold on. StreamYard. Oh, my gosh. StreamYard just, like, jumped a whole bunch. You guys were, like, very chatty this morning. I all was. Right. I was super happy to talk to folks. I was like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I know. I know. Maya's got a day off today, so that is super. Oh, no, not a day off. An off day. That's totally different. <laughs> off, day off? Good. Off day? Mm. Not so much. I know. I'm sorry. But overall, okay. So that's good. That's good. Laurel's here. Hey, Laurel. So glad to see you today. 
Melanie hopes that your day gets better, Maya. So do we, the rest of us do, right? Oh, little advice from Caro, absolutely. Oh my gosh, let's see. Ooh, Melanie says, while I enjoy my sandwich, I'm gonna make a rough outline of what needs to be done in my work in progress today. I'm on chapter nine of my debuts rewrite. Look at you, very nice job. All right, so here, Caro, as always, getting the ball rolling. Uh, she said, we're discussing marketing and promoing in 2021. Uh, anybody got any questions to help guide that discussion? So that is what we are going to talk about today. So, so what do you think, you guys? Do you want to start with a little marketing talk? Do we want to just roll right into like a five-minute warm-up? What do we want to do today? Can I do a warm-up? Cause I'm like itching to actually, I'm, I'm itching to like do, do my outline. Um, cause I already know what I'm going to talk about for the marketing. So. Okay. All right. Warm up, warm up. It is, uh, let's see what we've got here. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to go with the electric warm up timer. Hold on here. Because of course I did not, I was like kind of scattered this morning. Um, oh, Michael's here. Hi Mike. I haven't seen you in forever. Oh, all right. I'm very glad. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so, so we're going to do this right to give us all a jolt this morning. <clears throat> we're going to do the five minute timer. And of course, I did not put push the button where you can hear the audio. So you'll have to listen to me saying ding, ding, ding at the end. Hope you don't mind. All right, guys. Let's get started. Do a little stretch, drink a little water or some sort of caffeinated beverage, and we will get started with our first five minute warm up sprint. Here we go.
Three, two, one. All right, let me just say, I don't know that we could have written through that timer because it was like totally like disco music all the way, right? Well, sort of disco and then like, um, you know, electronic like dance music at the end. I know, oh, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was very, but, and also uh, maybe a little seizure inducing with the, <laughs> but uh, but I sort of dug it. Like it was a good five minute thing. Like I'm just kind of rocking yeah. out. So yeah, all right, fantastic. So uh, what is everybody gonna work on today in between our marketing chat? What are you gonna work on, Carol? You said you're working on oh, my outline. Yeah, my yeah, well, I mean, I wanted to outline what I was going to write today, um, and I finished doing that. So I'm working on Ten of Brownies, which is the follow-up book to Queens of Swords and Silence. Um, so I'm really excited about it. Um, but I'm I'm having kind of like an interesting thing because I'm actually shifting between three POVs, and one of them speaks in we and us. And so, like, I have to go and change all that because originally it was kind of like it was disjointed. So I, I think that, like, the worst thing – in the universe is changing POVs in a novel right halfway through because you never catch them all the first time. Like every edit, you'll find another one, another one, another one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I did that a while back with the book. I started in third person and then I always switched it to first person. And, um, and it, I wasn't even that far in. I was maybe a third of the way into the book. And I, like, I, even to the last edit, we would still occasionally find some. So anyway. Yeah, super fun. How about you, Michelle? What's popping today? I am finishing the video game project. Like, I'm going to turn this thing in today, and the contract, like, everything I have contracted is done. And even better, I don't have any new contracts starting till January, you guys. Yay! Yay! I'm so excited to have this month to, like, breathe. <laughs> Can we talk yeah. about how cool you are. Like seriously, no. like you're just scripting video games. You're ghostwriting for like major Olympic athletes. Like <laughs> it's a fun job. I'm very tired. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna trust you through this internet. Okay? <laughs> I know, right? We're like, oh, <laughs> Michelle. And speaking of how much how awesome Michelle is, I don't know if you guys know this. If you've not already subscribed to her channel, but she has blown past her thousand subscribers and she is kicking some butt over there and it's because she has amazing content and if you've not if you have not watched her um her vlogs and her little um fiction fixits you are definitely missing out you want to do that so oh you're so welcome we're so glad you're here all right you guys let's do some marketing talk everybody in the chat let us know what you're working on today but let's talk a little bit about marketing. So Laurel says, totally here for the marketing talk. Yay. Maya's got a good question. What are the best platforms for promo? Do you need YouTube or doing something like Instaworks just as well? Hmm. Anybody want to take this before, uh, you know me, I'll start just rambling away. So I, I can speak to a little bit of it. Yeah. Um, so the which platform that you decide to actually uh, market yourself on is really kind of where your target audience is. Um, I, YouTube is kind of a double-edged sword when you're talking about marketing because most of the people that are here that are looking for videos about authors are actually other people who are aspiring to write. Um, and that's a good community to be part of, but is that where your readers are? You know what I mean? Um, so normally one of the questions that a lot of publishers will ask you is going to be who is your intended reader? And part of knowing who your intended reader is, is knowing where to find them. My intended readers are usually nerds in gaming stores. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, no, so whenever I go to a gaming store, I always ask like, Hey, can I leave like this little bookmark with my book stuff? Like here, it's totally free. And they're like, yeah, just put it right there. So that's something that I do. Um, but if your intended reader is somebody that likes romance novels and they hang out in the library a lot, then that's probably where you're going to want to leave some of your promo stuff at. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's also speaking engagements. If you can find those, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> But if you can um, come out and you can talk to other people about your book and you can be very uh, confident about what it is that you're presenting, they're just as likely to go and purchase your goods as well. So right, that's, that's true. That's the start. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of really good in-person places to promote your books. Um, but definitely, and especially now, since we don't know how much longer we're all going to be stuck inside, there are also a ton of really good online platforms mm -hmm. Um, for promotion. And I know um, 
Uh, Michelle, do you want to talk about that a little bit or no? Or I'll just ramble. It's up to you. You ramble first. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So, so Carol is exactly right in that you have to find out where your audience is. But the other thing is it's important that you find a good match between your audience and you. So mm -hmm. if your audience loves Instagram and you hate it, then you can promote on Instagram, but your heart is not going to be in it. Mm -hmm. And it's way better to do a couple of platforms really, really well than it is to do, um, you know, seven platforms terribly. Yeah. Yeah. But you can find those online communities. And I think Carol's idea about not necessarily going to like where necessarily, um, you know, like author tube is, is a really good idea. And then the other places that I, that I definitely will be focusing on this year and that I recommend are places where you're kind of shooting fish in a barrel. And those, mm -hmm. those places are Goodreads, which is all readers, all voracious readers. readers. And it's, it's kind of unwieldy that platform. And yet people who do it well see a ton of benefit from that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you really do find some super loyal people and that can really push your book in a way that I don't know that any other platform can except maybe BookBub, which is the other one that I would recommend. You have, a, it's a different kind of community than it is on uh, Goodreads, but definitely there's a lot of book recommendations over on BookBub and they have that same sort of friends and followers. You're more likely to get a BookBub promo if you have a big following, mm -hmm. which I do not because, you know, a lot of indie authors, they book, bub, book, bub, book, bub, book, bub, book, bub. But since most of my books are traditionally published, they don't really do that. You know, they do some, but I like for my contemporary romances, I have never had a book, bub. And it's, like if you don't do them, then you don't get those friends or followers on BookBub. So my my two big goals this year are going to be to really work on um, being a lot more engaged and working on my Goodreads following and the same with BookBub. So mm -hmm. that'll be my goals this year. All right, Michelle. I, what I definitely you? agree that like, I mean, what both of you guys said, you know where your audience is. Cause like my, my audience is not on YouTube, but I knew that when I signed up and that wasn't, this wasn't like a marketing thing for me. This was a teaching thing. Mm -hmm. but, um, but also if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. Like mm -hmm. I have an Instagram account and I really shouldn't because I hardly ever post on there. <laughs> I just never open that app. I don't, I don't like it. And maybe some of my audience, I guess could potentially be on there, but I don't know. I'm just not interested in using it. So it's not, it's not going to be effective, you know? Right. Um, I, I know we've talked, I think I've talked about this even on your live stream before, but I just, it's, it's always, for me, it's, it's always about middle grade. And I know mm -hmm. that's a different beast than everything else. Um, trying to reach kids and it's just going to be school visits. Right. So, yeah. Like, and, and just book clubs and, and things where I can talk to kids virtually for right. <laughs> being, um, that's what I was going to try to set up for a book I have coming out in the spring, um, a virtual book club tour. I, well, that's good. Yeah. yeah, I think that's such a great idea. And you know what, for you, the other thing that I would do is a virtual library tour. Because, yeah. yeah, because a ton of libraries are, you know, they are doing interviews with authors because they're trying to keep their own communities engaged. Right. And so, and think how many libraries have, you know, they're like, reaching out now, obviously, middle grade is so much more of a challenging audience to reach directly yeah. unless you're on TikTok. <laughs> but but the thing is you can reach their moms that way. And so right. yeah, so and that's so that's always a good way to you go. You kind of have to like target the gatekeepers and then also target the kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Exactly. So, exactly. One, one interesting thing that kind of happened to me in the last couple of months is like so I'm a gamer, right? I, I play mm -hmm. a lot of video games. And I joined one gaming community and at some point they always like, so what do you do for a living? And I'm always like, uh, <laughs> and so I, I actually came out and told them what I did for a living. They were kind of like, we want to buy your book. And so then I had like an increase of sales and then they're telling their friends about it because nerds like to support nerds that way. Yeah. So, um, word of mouth is love. super, yeah. super powerful. <laughs> it's extremely powerful. It's I mean, it, I mean, important. it really is. Important. 
It is. That word of mouth can make or break any book. And there are a lot of books that did not have much in the way of marketing support or even author support, but somebody falls in love with it, won't shut mm -hmm. up about it. And they just keep talking and talking and talking about it until it sort of takes off or people think like, oh, yeah, I got to figure what the, you know, figure out what this is all about. And just, just to caveat on that, if you do find out that there are people who are talking about your book, go thank them. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Go thank them and be like, Hey, I saw that you're promoting my shit. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Is there something that I can send you? Like, even if it's just like some simple bookmark merch, send it because yeah. building a positive relationship with your reader community is going to be so good for you and your book. And if there's one thing that I have definitely learned in the, since I started this whole publishing journey thing, people like to follow good people and they like to follow mm -hmm. nice people. So if you can mm -hmm. actually live up to that, do it. So yes, your our mothers were right. You sure right, don't be an asshole, but definitely always <laughs> but definitely always say thank you. Okay, so Melanie says she's excited for today's discussion. I'm gonna be most likely going to be releasing my book in 2022. Woo! Yay. Uh, so in 21 marketing promoting is the goal. Yes, that is really, really smart. How does Facebook how well does Facebook work using an author page? So I'm not good at that. I, I'm terrible. Like my first publisher made me get an author page and I just don't use it. Like it's, it's, it's Michelle's Instagram for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I have, I have the exact same thing. I got it because my publisher told me I needed to, I did it. I have, um, I don't know, I have like a thousand friends on there. Who I have no idea why they like me because they do not engage in any way. I don't engage really. And it's prob it was probably a missed opportunity. Um, but I don't care for Facebook really. I'm, I'm literally only on there for the author tube community. And it is only you, Carol, you are the person that dragged me into Facebook. Like I've literally, <laughs> I've literally been on it for like a thousand years, but the only time I've ever actually engaged is because of you, um, saying like in your live stream, I messaged you on Facebook. Well, right. to be fair, I was trying to help you, and I had messaged you on Twitter, on Instagram, and Facebook. So when you showed up in my stream, I was like, I'm trying to talk to you. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm very grateful that you are so persistent because, look, we have become such really good friends, and I really, right? And you did help me because I was like, you know, floating around. I was, she was trying to help me with my live stream. Think she just came on to run it. I think that's really the best. For I just wanted to tell you how to use the <laughs> buttons. That was it. <laughs> well, pretty soon I'm going to learn that. I think that's. Uh, I think that's good. So Laurel says my 2021 goal is to get website and newsletter up and running. Can I just say again how I think your newsletter is literally, if you do nothing else, your newsletter is the most important thing that you can possibly do. Yes. How often should I plan on updating each and who has ideas for content to put in them? This is All like, right. I think we did a live stream about we, this. We yeah. did. We did. I'll link to it below. Um, with your newsletter, you want you don't want to just reach out to them anytime you want something. So make sure that you're building your relationship. And like once a month, every other month, it's okay. Some people do it. Um, a, a, another author I know, Vince Sandry, he sends a newsletter out like three times a week, which mm. is crazy to me. But he has like this massive newsletter list and these people feel like you know they're friends they're all yeah. friends and if you have the energy to do that god bless you <laughs> i do not yeah it depends on what you're sending out too like if you're sending out like a generic author update like how how much has changed in the course of seven days i send mine out once a month mm -hmm. um and the reason i do that isn't because i don't have anything interesting going on but because i actually sent out a survey to my readers going hey what do you Help me. How often do you want to hear from me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the big thing was like, uh, was either once a month or once every two weeks. Um, and I, but the once every two weeks was like 10 people and everybody else was once a month. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, once a month is good as long as you're consistent with it. Um, and the reason I have to say consistent is because the email algorithms, if you're not consistent, will throw you into spam. Mm -hmm. That's right. true. 
<sighs> That's very true. Sometimes you get thrown into spam anyway at the beginning. That is uh, one reason why it's good to do that double opt-in. Although occasionally in the beginning, you get thrown into spam also. But the more your readers click on your links, the more they respond back to you and interact with you, mm -hmm. uh, the, the better it is for you and for your newsletter. And one of the things that I do to get my readers to interact is to just ask them a question. Yeah, reader engagement questions, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that works out really well. And also when I'm not promoting my own books, I like to promote other people's books. And so, right. And so you say, Hey, I just read this. It's really cool. You'll probably enjoy it because mm -hmm. the books that I'm reviewing are the kind of books, you know, that are going to be liked by the people who read my books. So, mm -hmm. all right. Fantastic. Well, let's go back and do, um, a, a 20 minute uh, sprint. We're going to get some work done and then we are going to come back and we are going to talk more about our promo goals for 2021. And I want to know what you got, like what are maybe your top two or three, like, okay, I'm going to get this done in 2021. So mm -hmm. that's what we're going to talk about uh, after the next sprint. All right. That All sounds right. super exciting. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put up our little uh, timer here today. Let me just make this great big. All right. There we go. I'm going to pull that comment down. Okay, everybody. Who would like to take us out for the sprint this time? <coughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, okay. Guys. okay. All right. It's the first serious sprint since Nano. I know you guys are tired. You worked your fingers off last month. I get it, but the words must flow. So we're going to write in three, two. <laughs> that doesn't match my tone at all. Write the words. Go. <laughs>
stop that and rewind it for next time oh don't stay don't play all right here we go so uh yay how'd everybody do good i'm working in a spreadsheet so is there an easy way to figure out word count well carol can probably answer that really she's like spreadsheet yeah, like if i oh. highlight the block that i wrote can i find the word count somewhere I could just type it into a, a word counter she .net froze. or whatever. No, she I did was froze. about to okay. say, like, it's a pen. We all froze. Okay. Uh, We're all froze. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess you could, like, cut and paste it into, like, a Word document just to kind of check it out. Yeah, I just typed it in. I think good. 250 Very words. good. I was posting <laughs> in a bunch of different places. So I posted a lot of words, but they were the same ones over and over again in different places. <laughs> Carol, <laughs> Carol, how'd you do? Um, I reread. Uh, 1,500 words, and I added uh, 326 words to it to try and flesh out my, awesome. my tree POV. Fantastic. So we had some people who came in, l like, last time during the chat, and I uh, was sort of slow poking through the, um, through the questions. So I want to just say hi to uh, some folks who came in, and um, and then we'll go back and talk about more questions but you guys let us know how you did in the chat Jeannie made it yay we're so glad you're here awesome Nihilus Geek is here hello geek we're so glad you made it today Dolls here she's still on the phone everybody's talking to their mom today Robert's talking to his mom <laughs> Dolls talking to her mom Doll thank you so much for dropping in we appreciate it Moon's here hello Moon Buddy Creative we're so glad you made it fantastical Michael's here I'm so glad I'm so glad you're here especially since you're still not feeling well mm. I hope you feel better it sounds like are you maybe on the mend a little bit? I hope so. That's just you know. All right, so a little. I miss you back and forth. Oh, everybody hopes you feel better, Michael. All right, mm -hmm. here we go. Spence says there's been snow on the ground for over a week. I still haven't turned my furnace on or taken the ACs out. Oh. Of the <laughs> uh, all right, you know what? You can just like concentrate on getting better. That's all you need to work on. All right. Ooh, Dialus Geek says to put cocoa in chili. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Just not I, like just, just not like a whole Hershey bar. Don't do that. No. No. no that's okay. Cocoa powder. <laughs> Stacy's here. I know. I thought I should put like on the. Uh, I did put a little Santa hat on my. Uh, on the thumbnail today, but I was really thinking about calling this the space heater edition because <laughs> right, it, it's cold. And usually, yeah. in the usually, like if I work in the morning, because I've been working a lot on my treadmill, which I love, I had to turn the AC down a little bit because you know after you're on there for an hour or two, you get kind of toasty. Yeah. And mm -hmm. um, but I have not had to do that the last couple of days because it's been chilly, chilly. All right, Stacy, we're going to take that small victory of getting your document open and we're <laughs> going to applaud you. Nice work, honey. We're proud of you. All right, here we go. Mr. Gray is in the house. Hello. Very nice. Uh, Carol says she's going to need a sweater. Sweater delivery coming right up. There we go. He's like, turn on the heat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ben's got distracted. I'm here. I feel like I should call my mom during the next sprint. I'm starting to feel left out because everybody's talking to moms and dads today. All right. So more good wishes for Michael. We are super glad to see you. Laurel says no new words, but scenes are now semi-organized in a Scrivener document. So I can see how many words each POV character currently has. Love that. All right, fantastic. Okay, so let's go back up for you guys. Oh, BC Brown's here. Hey, BC. 
so glad you made it. Eva's here. Hello, Eva. Melanie says, trying to get off Facebook, at least for my personal stuff. I may consider having an author page on there, but I don't think my intended audience is there. If you write mysteries, your intended audience definitely is on Facebook because your mystery audience for the most part is women who are like 50 and over. And they heart Facebook. Those cat videos are all their jam. Well, who doesn't love a good cat video? But, <laughs> right? So Facebook is definitely a good place if you have like a mystery audience. But but yeah, for a lot, like for me, I know that, you know, Romance Landia definitely has like a massive, uh, you know, sort Twitter of following. following. Massive Twitter. <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. on Twitter. And definitely, um, you know, definitely, definitely has a, a good solid Facebook following, but, and I am happy to engage on Twitter, but Facebook is not my jam. So if you guys, if you guys like to follow Romance Landia and the romance community, there's a podcast called Heaving Bosoms Podcast, and they talk about romance books, but that, that cult following, they're mm -hmm. intense. I love mm -hmm. them a lot. I actually dedicated my first Faye Black short story to them. <laughs> to the Heaving Bosoms? Yes. Ah, love that. Love that. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So Laurel says, I know theoretically the Facebook is where I should be for my potential audience, but I really hate it so much and can't seem to make it work for me. So we had talked about this a little bit. If you hate it, don't do it. Don't do it. Because all of us are more than one thing, right? We all go like, I hate Facebook, which I'm so sorry to those of you who came over because I just posted on Facebook. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel really bad. I feel a little guilty about that. Um, but don't, don't do it because your people are going to be someplace else where you actually like to be, where you feel like it's fun. So I think it's hilarious that Michelle hates Instagram so much because I actually super love it. Mm. I like to post pictures of my dogs on it. I'm on and there for the dog pictures, honestly. Instagram <laughs> loves, remember. right? Instagram loves dog pictures. Yes. Loves, loves, loves dog pictures. All right. So I'm going back to some other questions. Holy smokes, we've got a gut. Uh, all right. Ooh, here we go. So question, how effective do you think blog hops are? Uh, Lisa, but this is a good question for everybody. So what do you guys think about that on, uh, you know, on your launch day, you maybe do a little blog tour and you're answering a lot of questions or doing little answers or doing posts. So thoughts, everybody, Michelle, how about you start on that one first? It's, I mean, all I have is my own experience and I, I, people, you're going to find all kinds of different statistics on this. And I'm sure a lot of people, I mean, it's a great way to get your, your face and the cover of your book in front of a lot of people. Um, I felt like when I, when I've done them a handful of times, I just got lost in a big crowd, you know, and sometimes, and this, this all depends. It's not always this way, but sometimes it feels like it's just a, another echo chamber where really the only people seeing it are other authors who are trying to promote their books. You know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. but, but I know, I'm sure that's not always the case. I, I mean, obviously like the booktube community and um, big reviewers on Goodreads, um, blog bloggers, book review bloggers, like they're really involved in this and they do look at each other's for books they want to buy. So I, I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it hasn't been, particularly helpful for me, but I am sure a lot of people have had success with it. Caro? If you can rock a blog and you already have like a following on your blog, then it's it's successful. That's fine. Especially if you're going on to somebody who has like a platform that has similar interests to what it is that you're promoting. So like if you write cozy mysteries and you go on to, uh, I don't know, what's the opposite of a cozy mystery? Crime thriller? Crime thriller, right. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Or horror, maybe. <laughs> yeah, or you go, you, basically you go on to something that's a 180 platform, you're not going to really get what right. it is that you need. Um, same mm -hmm. thing if you go on to a new blogger who's only got two posts, and you're like, hey, let me do a blog takeover, and all you're really doing is bringing them a following, and you're not getting anything in return. Um, that's why you'll find that some people are kind of picky about where it is that they do like these platform takeovers at. Um, mm -hmm. But it really, it depends on where your strength is. If you have a blog and you have a big following and you have a lot of engagement on your blog, 
then that's a great sign. But <laughs> so I I totally agree with you that you want if you are going to do some sort of a blog tour kind of thing, which is what I got when she said blog hops. Like I'm thinking more that you're posting, a, you're doing a Q and A or a post on somebody else's blog, you know, in the week of your launch, like your sort of traditional, um, like 20 stop blog tour. And I think what you said earlier about having, about blogs that really focus on your particular genre can actually be really helpful. And that blog, that are just sort of general bookie blogs. Often you have that experience that Michelle's talking about where you're just there in this echo chamber and that like real people are not actually reading your, like real human readers are not reading it. It's just other authors co you know, commenting because you did theirs and all that. So I, I remember one thing. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you No, off. you're fine. Um, I did have one. The only time I've ever had a publicist who actually like did their job um, was for a middle grade series, and and she organized a blog tour. And once we got the list of who was on it, it was very few actual book review blogs, and it was all like family and kid influencer mm -hmm. um, YouTube channels and Instagram channels, and some of them had like hundreds of thousands of followers and they didn't just review books. They were like all about family stuff or all, you know what I mean? And that, right. that was awesome. That got that book cover out in front of an audience of people like who are actually my legit target right. audience. Right, that they're your target and that it's yeah. not book, 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 book. Yeah. And so you stand out more than if you were just doing one um, one book blog after another. Yes, I, don't I, target the book reviewers. Exactly. So, and then another thing you have to remember is often when you do those kinds of book, uh, those, you know, I, w I keep wanting to call them blog tours, but if you think about it, they really do encompass more than that. Like the yeah. bookstagram community is really big and right. I would totally do a bookstagram tour yeah. now because they do have big audiences and they are often really highly engaged, yeah. uh, which, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, and a lot of those bookstagrammers have, all, you know, they also have a blog in addition to their bookstagram. And so they, you know, the content kind of goes back and forth. I too have had really mixed experiences with this. During those times when I have done one of those, like you pay for a, you know, you pay some blog tour company, you know, for 20 different um, blog tour stops. I will say that those have not been particularly effective for me. Mm -hmm. um, but when I did a bunch of, so one of the things when 15 Minutes of Shame came out was that I, you know, my previous book before that was a dating book. And so when that book came out, which is about a dating expert who gets dumped and there's like little dating advice sprinkled throughout the book, I did a bunch of stops on dating sites and that did really, really well. And it's the same thing that you're talking about, Michelle, yeah. where, you, where you are reaching your actual audience and not just sort of an echo chamber of book authors talking about other people's books, you know, where there's a different one every day and... There's no real critique. I will say though, if you can get, you know, there there are some uh, some places, some blogs that have really, you know, have a really good following. And I will say one of the blog tour companies that I know people are really happy with is um, I think it's called Partners in Crime, and they all they do all these like crime and thriller books, and mm -hmm. they they like really do have a good following. So you know, it, it really just depends. So they can be great and they can also suck. So it depends on the quality <laughs> of the blogs, but, but you have to keep in mind, like, who are you trying to reach? Yes. All right. Fantastic. So, uh, BC Brown had said Caro is chomping at the bit to outline. The five minute timer looks like it needs coffee. <laughs> I, I put a link in. That was the five minute because I'm so far behind. Doll is here. We love you, doll. Uh, yeah, it was so crazy that timer. Oh my gosh. So JC says she is slow starting this morning, but doing okay. All right, here we go. Yes. 
Wait, what? There's, a question, there's a question that JC has that I think is a good topic that oh, we yeah. can. Yeah. yeah. Close right. to the bottom. Just scroll down. Just scroll down. <laughs> Just scroll down. <laughs> Does it have a timestamp on it? Uh, no. I don't know. I oh, in, in 1101, it's a two part question. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, hold on. 1101. All right. I'm, I'm scroll, I scroll too far. It starts Wait. with you. I totally get it. Wait, hold on. Oh, I can't go back any farther. Can you just read no, it? No, not go not go up. Go down. Go all the way to the fresh class. I thought you said it was 1101. No, just, just scroll. Oh, to add. No, okay, I've got it. Zones, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're okay. All right, hold on. JC example. Wait, wait. Ooh, got it. Okay. Thanks, JC. <laughs> thank you, Caro. Okay, I totally get shooting for your target audience, but shouldn't you at least attempt to reach an audience that maybe doesn't normally read your genre? No, no. Um, <laughs> well, read, read part two, read part two. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just teasing. Uh, example, I'm not normally a fantasy book reader, so but for all the fantasy authors here on YouTube, I wouldn't now be starting to read some of these awesome fantasy books you guys write. And she says to add, I would never have downloaded Carol's book the other day had it not been for me finding her channel here because I'm not her target audience, but I love Carol's channel, which made me get it. So that is totally awesome. And if you have, um, this is just my opinion. <laughs> if you have saturated your own audience, then for sure. And it's always nice to pick up extra readers, but it's a lot easier to get readers to read your book who already love fantasy yep. than it is to try and convert a romance reader or a mystery reader to like fantasy. So those extra sort of pickups of readers because they just like you or they connect with you, absolutely awesome. But until you feel like you've been everywhere within your own genre, um, I, for me at least, I would. I'd work on trying to get those people to hit the buy button before I'd start trying to get people outside my genre. What and do you I guys think? You, I think that if, if a book really genuinely has crossover potential mm -hmm. to cross over into another age group or into another genre, then yeah. Sure. But I also think, and I hope this doesn't sound harsh, I also, I also think that authors tend to think their novels have more crossover. <laughs> Actually, true. <laughs> I mean, like, yes, we're we're all kind of blending genres all the time. Like, we're writing a science fiction, and it does have a little romance in it. Should you target the romance audience? No. <laughs> like, that's really not going to be successful for you. It doesn't mean you're not blending genres, but crossover is actually, I think, a lot more rare than authors think. Right. Yeah. No. And and yeah. part, another reason that you you do want to branch out, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that your book is backed by your intended audience first. Because me, yeah. me, I'm very suspicious of genres that I don't read very often. So if I'm going to actually read it, it needs to come recommended to me, or I need mm -hmm. to see enough good, um, you know, a good reflection on it before I'll go ahead and engage it. So for example, there's a book called Nightmare Alley. And I would never have re read it if it did not come recommended to me by somebody that I knew and that the reviews for it were positive. I don't right. I don't want to waste my time reading a flaming trash pile, even though I did that twice this year for mm. for the sake of a drunk book review. But I don't like <laughs> I don't like to subject myself to to that kind of stuff. So, yeah. 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 So this is interesting. Um, Eva says valid. I read a romance by an author too, but again, you have a connection to that mm. author. Lo cute. Loved it. I don't typically read romance. Uh, did they market to me as a reader though? Not really. So I don't know. BC Brown, who is a fellow marketer says, yes, it's just a matter of percentages spent in each area. For me, I'm going to spend 100% of my effort where I know I'm going to find the most readers, and I know that I'll get other people while I'm doing that, but that's going to be my real area of focus. All right. I think Dal's let's see. a good example. Dal's a good example, too, because earlier you guys said that my intended reader are, are nerds, right? Nerds, gamers, stuff like that. And Dal came and said, I'm none of these things. I was like, you're not, but you're a mythology nut. And there's lots of mythology mm -hmm. in here. So you're still my intended reader. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. All right. So word of mouth by the others that had read that author tuber is what got me to try it. Already believe them capable or I'd not watch their content and all that. Eva also got 1,100 words. Ta-da. Nice job. Um, Aria. Hi, Aria. I find it easier if I have some questions and answer them. I feel more creative. Any comments? Okay. 
Not quite sure about that. All right. Maybe explain. All right. So Eva says, some books I buy to support the author. Ditto. Some books I buy to read the story. Author tubers fall on both sides. Too many books, not enough time. Uh, she says she was marketed to as a writer slash supporter of the arts, maybe. Or I just have a hoarding issue with books. Ding, ding. Yes. All right. There's that. All right. Uh, okay. Good. All right. Fantastic. Did I, I know, I feel like I've missed like a ton, but I will say Deborah Floyd loves Facebook. God bless you. I'm glad you do. One of us I, has to. I know. Right. Oh, I fell in love with Agatha Christie since I was 16, mm. not to mention all those Nancy Drews. Can mm. I say something? There is an author. Her name is Andrea Carter. And if you love Agatha Christie, you must, must, must go get her books. She is like, she's an Irish author. She's unbelievably talented. And you will feel like Agatha Christie is being channeled through her, except mm -hmm. her stuff is more contemporary. But yeah, love her, love her, love her. All right, Laurel says, I never tried Twitter. I heard years ago that it was kind of toxic. Yes, so I stayed away. How do you do Twitter without getting sucked into drama or toxicity? You don't. Yeah. I know, so, I hate to so say it. Even if that's your, yeah. here's the, if you have a community with more than one person in it, at some point there's gonna be drama, there's gonna be toxicity. You can't get away from it because people have different expectations, different opinions, and they don't always clash. And for some reason, we didn't learn how to talk to each other as kids, so we always fight. <laughs> There, yeah, I think there's some truth to that. I think there's some truth to that. And I know that there was sort of like a kind of a clash going on for a while. Maybe it's still going on uh, with author tubers. Like, oh, can you call yourself an author tuber if you're not published or, or, you know, who was here first or that, that conversation has a lot of elitism in it. Um, and it's people Ooh. trying to put themselves into hierarchies about who's what and oh, you can't yeah. be that because you don't fit in the like and these are and what okay, so you guys can come at me in the dms if you want later but the people i find who really kind of push that conversation the most are the ones who don't write don't publish and they like to criticize other people because they've got nothing else going on yeah i think i think there's a, some truth to that i think there's some truth to that i don't i think anybody who wants to be a part of author tube is a part of author tube i mean i just yeah right right yeah it's come on in the water's warm <laughs> it is and speaking of water Wait a minute, here we go. It's time yeah, to do good. a new spread. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, so good. <laughs> I know. Here we go. All right, everybody. So if you have further marketing questions, please put them uh, in the chat and do like our brilliant uh, JC did and put a big Q there so that we can find them. Uh, so Carol can find them and then tell me about them. But let's go ahead and warm up and do like get your fingers bright because we're all frozen otherwise and um and let's go ahead and do a 20 minute sprint michelle would you like to count us down i'm just not good at it but i can <laughs> let's can't do it as, as uh, motivationally as Kara does nobody but can do it as motivationally as Kara does <laughs> you and i are just gonna have to aspire so go okay. ahead you've got it go. let's get ready guys all right ready lisa uh-huh Go, five, uh, three, oh, three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one, go.
All right, everybody. All right, here we go. Let's get rid of that. Okay, good. I was actually productive, although I did have to run out and um, grab some water because I was like <laughs> parched, I think, because I really do have my space heater on today. Yeah, that <laughs> dries you out. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh oh, I think. Oh, say that again. Is. To me, you sounded like. Okay, good. Oh, is it me? Sorry. It's you sounded like a robot, but it's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was okay. It was okay. Uh, all right. So, Jeannie had a question. Let us know how you did, everybody. Um, Jeannie said tour hops, tour stops and hops. Tours and hops are different. I think they're the same thing. Does everybody think they're the same thing? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm sorry if I was unclear. Okay. All right. Laurel, uh, Melanie used the hashtag writing community hashtag to build my follower followership, but I don't use it much anymore because I have my small little circle with a few folks I interact with regularly. And they avoid the drama, which I appreciate. Generally, in the author community, I don't see a ton of drama unless there's like you know something that's going on in the community as a whole. The whole, um, yeah. like you know, the plagiarism scandal uh, with romance authors. Uh, oh, copy paste, oh, copy -paste Chris, crisis. right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then and yes. then there was what publishing paid me. That was a, it that was. Was a wonderful dumpster It fire. really was. It really was. All right. So uh, uh, JT says, I totally get shooting for your target audience, but shouldn't you at least attempt to? That was oh, wait. The, one. the same one we got. I was like, hold on. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I totally missed that. Okay. Ooh, Deborah got over 800 added to my editing hooray yay does everybody nice. does everybody know about 70 750 words tell your friends who need some butt glue i do not know about that what is that who knows about seven seven hundred and fifty words all right deborah we want to know all right there we go that's good okay so um i want to go back hold on here uh, Laurel says, I'm, I'm uh, speaking of marketing and also irony. I'm currently working on a YouTube video about the 80, 20 rule. And I've been feeling like YouTube and video editing are my two worst time sucks. <laughs> so the most time consuming platform right? period <laughs> in the universe, right? If they, if we've got like, Martians with their own social media platforms, they're like YouTube, man, like YouTube. Um, so for anybody who doesn't know what the 80-20 rule is, is that you spend 80% of your time on something that brings you 20% of your like return on investment or reward. Um, and 20% of what you do brings you 80% of your reward. So basically, if you're like businesses use this as 20% of your customers bring you 80% of your income and 80% of your customers bring you 20%. And the goal is always to get rid of as many of those things that take up 80% of your time for 20% of your return right. and more of the 2080s, right? So I think we can all agree that YouTube is a bit of a time suck. I mean, it, yeah, it uh, that I really have been thinking this year a lot about because I have not written as much at all. And I'm not sure if that's pandemic or if that's that this year I tried to launch a YouTube channel. It's hard <laughs> like, to measure things in 2020. <laughs> right, exactly. So you don't know like, well, if I were the regular me, would this be fine? Right. Or is it, yeah. And I'm not like, I'm not nearly as, um, as, regular as you are as far as posting like you really uh you really do a great job uh, michelle and carol both uh so so let's talk about the time suck of youtube okay well i will say this for me um it's it's worth it because youtube is unique in that it's not social media it's a it's it's a search engine mm -hmm. and when you make a video if, as long as you're covering something that's always timely to be talking about, it's going to be out there working for you promotionally forever. 
Whereas if you post something on Instagram or you tweet something or Facebook post, it, it has about a 24 hour life mm -hmm. and then it's gone most of the time. Right. Right. So that, that makes YouTube way, way more worth it to me. Like videos that I made back in March are still getting views and still getting new subscribers and new newsletter, you know, subscribers and all that stuff. That, that makes it worth it to me. Mm. Yeah. So a really good example. Yeah, so a really good example of that is Deborah, who um, who came here. I think Deborah, didn't you watch the? Um, first of all, we want to know what seven hundred fifty words is, but I feel like she said earlier that she was that she was a fan of the outline. So either that's a romance outline or self help book outline. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when we talked to her before that she was all about the self help outline. That is still my best performing video. Mm -hmm. And I did it like it was one of my earliest ones. So I when I look at it, I sort of cringe a little bit because I feel like it's one of my more terrible ones. But of course, it's the most popular. And that thing just keeps going and yeah. going. Right. And I think there's, you know, you're right that it is a search engine and that there's some real uh, advantage to that. And uh, here. OK, so she said, I'm the one who loved your outline. I'm too busy writing my own book. I did read the most recent Carl Heisen. OK, so Deborah, are you re are you writing nonfiction or fiction? Inquiring minds want to know. All right. Uh, OK, so what do you guys think about? I'm fascinated, Laurel. <laughs> And she says she's gone too far to quit now, even though YouTube sucks up. YouTube and video editing suck up a ton of her time. Uh, what do you guys, I mean, it, it, there is some, do you feel like, do you feel like the time you spend on YouTube, even though you go like, okay, it's worth it. Do you feel like it's worth it when you look at the amount of time versus what you're getting out of it or do you feel like you're putting in the effort now and at some point you're going to hit some tipping point where you have to devote less time to it but that it keeps continuing to pay off it kind of depends like i know my older videos don't get a lot of views and like that's not a sour point or anything but i mean I think for me, what I like to use YouTube for the most is actually being able to connect with people and actually talk to them, building up that that rapport with my relationship or building up my relationship with my audience more. Um, that's that's where I think I get the most benefit, because a lot of times, like I said earlier, readers do like to connect with authors and they like to form some kind of relationship with them mm -hmm. um, in a non romantic platonic sense. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like making like actual like tutorial videos and stuff like that, that's kind of a double edged sword because I usually tell people that I can take a rock and throw it at somebody and they've already made the video that I want to make. Um, and I know that there's the argument that it's true, but they haven't done it like you have. And, you know, it's it, it really depends. When I try to make content on YouTube, I try to make it about something that I'm very passionate about but something that I think is also related to the author community as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's a little bit like my, my blog videos that I do, it's just kind of like, look at me trying to make it as an author. This is how I schedule my day. This is how I have my priorities. You know, that's, that's what those are about. A lot of the how to videos are usually inspired by things like Wordstock or project author tube. Like, you know, I try to make those community related because I want to provide to the group. Um, yeah, so, but I will say that when push comes to shove and I have to sacrifice something, YouTube is actually the first thing that I'm kind of like, sorry guys, I love you, but I got to go and be right. I have to take a break. Yeah. I, well, I think Michelle and I, we, like what you said earlier, so for me, I I came to kind of a realization last year that like my one of my favorite parts of being an author is actually like working with aspiring authors. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I started my YouTube channel. Not so much because I thought it would be some vehicle to really promote my book so much, but mm -hmm. because I felt like I wasn't like that was the thing that was most enjoyable to me. And I was really seeking to, um, you know, to do that, to help other authors. I obviously had, like we all do, I had a lot of people that helped me along the way. And I love the idea that I could be that even in some small way for some other person. So I think it's really cool that you also came to this from like, you just wanted to like teach and help yeah. other writers to do that. Yeah, I kept, I, I was like, 
sort of teaching online courses for different organizations because I couldn't classroom teach anymore. And they just, they and I, I mean, I, I take responsibility too, just struggled to get good enrollment. It was always just, you know, it's hard. There's so many courses out there and you never know what's a scam and what's not. And, and I finally just was like, you know what? I'm not going to make any money on it for a long time, if ever, but I can, I can just do my workshops on YouTube and like find people that yeah. way. And while I'm not monetized yet, I mean, I'm sure it'll happen eventually, but like, I know that nobody really makes a ton of money off their monetized YouTube channel. But what I have gotten out of it is people see me and they contact it, contact me to teach virtually, to speak, and for ghostwriting. Like, I just signed yeah. a client for January who, when she contacted me, she was like, I said, I watch your YouTube videos. And I. it's not just like, uh, like I like you or I like how you talk about writing. It's when you're going to hire somebody to do something it helps a lot when you've seen them face to face, like you've right. seen them they're a real person and a real writer and they talk about the craft, you know, that makes a huge difference. Right. It's definitely gotten me work I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So in that way, it's actually really financial. Yeah, that's, how, yeah. I, that's yeah. how I actually have my two clients that I have because they came and saw how organized I was with everything. They're like, <laughs> we need that. Please come and help us. So I literally organized two other people's lives. If, uh, if I, yeah, that's the thing, right? If you if you spend any time watching Carol videos and you need someone to organize your life, you're going to be like, I found the woman who can <laughs> make this happen for me. I. I have had a similar experience. I um, I have had a number of book coaching clients who came from specifically that one video we were talking about earlier, where I'm now like working with people long term to get their books in shape, which I love. And I didn't. I had no like it did not even occur to me. I thought I'll help. I'll tell them what to do in the video. It did not occur to me that um, that this would come back around, but I love it. It's been this like really amazing and wonderful side effect of this. So absolutely. All right. And, and I do like it as much as I have struggled this year to sort of find the time to do as many videos as I would like. I actually really do like, I like thinking of them. I like recording yeah. them. I generally like editing them, me but too. Yeah, I just need like six more days in a week and then I will. Yeah. Be... <laughs> I just right? need like more hours in the day because like, I don't know if anybody in the comment section actually makes videos, but for any videos that you see that might be 20 minutes, that takes me about an hour and a half to edit because I have to watch the footage, rewatch it. I have to add in all the graphics and everything else. So it's not yep. just a 20 minute video. It's it's like a two hour project. So, and then, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I'm laughing because mine are so, I'm so much slower. I'm like, I, <laughs> not like, not that you would know by looking at our two videos side by side, but I spend more time editing than you do. So again, clearly it's, an, I, I think it's like an 80, 20 thing for me, right? I'm spending 80% of the time to get 20% of a care. Of you. you know what? We're, we're probably actually spending the same amount of time. Cause one of the things that I do is that I'll actually do retakes. So like all my, like when I record with the exception of some tarot videos, it's all kind of like segmented. So that way it all kind of flows. Mm -hmm. So that way I'm not, that way I'm not editing one long video. I hate editing one long video. That drives me absolutely bonkers. <laughs> That's how that's how I do it. And I, uh, and I feel like I need to sort of change uh, I feel like I need to change that. Michelle, what do you do? Do you do like a bunch of shorter takes or do you one long video? Um, over the summer, I was I was doing like batches. I batch filmed a bunch of videos. Um, I Lately now, I film my vlog throughout the week and edit it on Thursday and put it up Friday. And then when I do a video for Monday, I usually write and film it on Friday. I'm, I'm not, I might take advantage since I have less work in December. I might try to batch film <laughs> some stuff uh, for January and just get it lined up. But generally I found that like, I like batch filming, but I'm not going to do it regularly. I don't think. Yeah. I know. I, I always think like, theoretically, I think this is a genius idea. And when I have done it, it has worked really well. Yeah. But, but I also struggle to find like, where can I get this much time to, to do all this? Right. Yeah. 
All right, JC is going to go back and watch all the marketing workshops that took place. Uh, Eva says it's fun to write marketing. I feel like marketing sounds so much easier than writing and editing, producing. Uh, that depends. I I like to market in person. I like to talk to people. Like that's that's where I really excel at. But if you were kind of like, hey, go make a marketing plan for Instagram and one for Amazon and another one for here, I'm going to take some pliers and just start pulling out my nails because that's way more enjoyable for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I like I like the marketing part of it, but it also sometimes, especially when you're on a deadline, stand tall, Michelle. Uh, when you're on a deadline, I feel like it can get to be really unwieldy. Uh, JC says, I'm that writer who just wants to write. If I had the money to pay someone else to do it, the rest would be worth paying them. Just let me write, but alas, I don't have to do it like that. I will say <laughs> Yeah, I there are some people who just go screw it. I'm just going to keep writing books. And there is some advantage to that, like, you know, acceleration that you get from just releasing more books. And, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, Janet Ivanovich, uh, who has been around for a very long time and and certainly became famous way before the Internet age. But her whole thing was, yeah, I don't like waste time with that. I just write, 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 write. And there are some times when I'm, you know, worrying about like scheduling social posts or whatever, where I think like, I should listen to that woman. Anyway, okay. Your greatest marketing tool is your book. That is the truth. That is the truth. Eva says, yes, it's like two full-time jobs on top of the actual life outside of it. Yeah, it it is. And, and the other thing is that you have to know that you could spend all of your time marketing. So... You, and you can't do that if you want to write books. You have to actually write more. So it's hard. You can always do more, uh, but you can't make yourself crazy with that. Just do what you can do and do your best, and that's what you got to do. That's it. All right. Deborah got over 800 added to my editing. Oh, we, I have put that one up like 17 times. I'm so sorry. Uh, Savvy doesn't know how many she got on that sprint, but she has to write all day in order to get her revisions completed by Friday. You can do it. You can do it. All right. So Deborah said, yes, self-help outline. I'm a goodly way through my book beat, The Blues Fast. Yay. I cured my depression. Awesome. So this is I. Uh, this is the reason why I super love this video and why I really like um, working with self help authors because I love like that people are going to change the world. Like right, depression is massive, and if you have figured out a way, even if you figured out a way for one person to get this done, that makes the word a better world, a better place. All right, Deborah loves cat videos also. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So JC started YouTube because of what I want to do with my author brand. Uh, will involve public speaking, and I have serious issue with public speaking in public, so I thought YouTube would help. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a little different talking to a camera and talking to about 50 pair of eyes looking at you, so I'm just throwing that it out there. Is. So we need to brace yourself for that. Yeah. <laughs> Practice, right. I used to like, because I've done television for a long time, I've always been pretty comfortable on camera, but, um, I had a terrible fear of public speaking for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I, and the only way to get over it was just do it. And now it does not bother me, but just do it, do it, do it. But I used to get like such anxiety about speaking in public that I would feel like I was going to throw up for like the first 15 or 20 minutes of any talk. But you know, the weird thing, like totally freak out if I'm speaking to 20 people, but I never ever felt nervous like speaking to like 5,000 people. Like never. It's the weirdest. Why, why are you? <laughs> it's but weird. I sometimes there's just like when an audience is so big, your brain kind of like checks out, like, oh, okay, whatever. But yeah, an intimate group where people are like right there in your face. Looking at you. <laughs> more stressful. Yes. Yes. No, it's true. All right. So she says, I know people aren't actually in front of me, but knowing people will see me speaking gives mm -hmm. me that feeling. Yeah. Good. 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 A stepping stone for that. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. It really, it really is. It really is. All right. Mary just mainly, hi, Mary. We're so glad you're here today. Mainly just does videos for fun. I usually film, edit, upload all in the same day. I don't edit that much other than slapping on uh, title cards. Nice. Okay. BC used to do three to six videos in three days. Mm -hmm. 
and then take a day uh, a day to edit them and upload them. I film B-roll all the time though, just short things here and there. I need to get better at filming B-roll. I'm so lazy about it. Just like, it's not hard. <laughs> no, it's real. It's not, um, but it's really smart that you're filming it all the time. And BC, I am so glad to see you. We have not had you around for a while and I'm just so happy that you're here today. We miss you a lot. All right, T Eva says I talk to an entire room of people unless they're all looking at me. That's what they do when you talk. Oof. All right, Stacy was able to work on public speaking when I started doing college radio. Good, Ooh. that's really good. The camera is for people, definitely. All right, um, hold on, I stream your script. Uh, oh, okay, so I have a program called Send Anywhere that easily transfers video to Mac. That's great. Uh, Melanie wants to make educational aspect uh, for teaching elements of craft, not just fiction, but writing in general to help students. Fantastic. That's really glad. Joanne Indahan, also glad that BC Brown is back. All right. So that is absolutely fantastic. So before we go, you want to, do you guys want to just tell, cause we're just about out of time. Do you guys want to tell about how, uh, what your like two, two marketing platforms maybe that you'd like to get better at this year or three, if you can't decide. Probably Instagram. I definitely want to get better at Instagram. Um, I want to do better on YouTube and I want to get better on Instagram. Um, mostly because I have to do YouTube at some point for Matter After, and I, a lot of my readers are on Instagram as well. At least the, the female variety of them are. So, yeah. So those yeah. are the two platforms. I held up uh, four fingers too. <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. How about you, Michelle? Um, the, I just want to keep improving at YouTube, and I had I have plans and ideas for these virtual book club tours, but. I need to actually like get off my ass and implement them and get that started for next year because yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I know I have, I have that, I have that same, uh, like I have like a big list of stuff I want to do. And I really am like trying to sort of prioritize like, okay, next year, if I only get one thing done, what do I want that to be? If I, oh, I want to publish two books. That's what I want to yeah. get done. There's two books that I want published in 2021. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm much better at setting writing goals than I am at marketing goals. I know, I know. And I, the funny thing is I actually like marketing, but it is challenging. All right, Melanie says, launch yes. newsletter, keep up with said newsletter, engage with newsletter sub subscribers. That's going to be one of my two. Get better at just sending regular newsletters because I am not sending them regularly. I forget about it all the time. <laughs> I know. It's tough to keep doing it. Although once you sort of get in the habit of it, it is a little it's, better. Yeah. I need yeah. to make part of my schedule. Yeah. For anybody who was asking about, I think it was Lauren uh, asking about the newsletter video. I put a link to it in the chat, but it's also in the description below. So Stacy says, I refuse to get an account on Instagram. I've not been on Twitter in nine years. Bless you, honey. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, JC wants to start live streaming in 2021. Yeah, as a that's, that's another great way to step up to the public speaking thing. That's a good right? girl. Get right. It. Yeah. Yes, it. I think um, it. I, it helps. I think to have people like to have somebody yeah, with you, right? Yeah, co-host. Really, yeah, yeah. It really does. It really does help. Uh, help to have people with you because right. then you just feel like oh, you're having a conversation, and then these yeah. other people are piping up, and that's kind of a really awesome thing. And JC, if you haven't yet, ask other people if you can co-host on theirs, because then you don't have the the pressure of hosting first, right? You doing your own. Right. That's a definitely, uh, definitely a great idea. And look, she's already got an offer. Melanie, oh, there you so go. <laughs> I also plan on streaming more next year. Maybe we can do some co-hosting streams. I think there's some real power in like putting your uh, aspirations, your plans out into the universe, because I feel like people always show up to help you mm -hmm. when you do that. Definitely. Stacy's goal is to write at least five family histories. Cool. Uh, she's already on the second and edit at least two by the end of 21, 
2021. That is fantastic. JC says, okay, thank you guys. Yay, that was, JC provide, like everybody had some really great questions today. JC had some really, uh, really, really good questions. And, you um, go. So thank you to all of you for jumping in. All right, guys, we have three minutes to go. We might make it today. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, BC Brown says she'll help you get over your nerves, JC. That's the way nice. to do it. All right. Bef uh, before we go, Carol Brown, will you do your little outro and tell the fine people what you're all about? Hi, my name is Carol Brown. I'm a fantasy author and the owner of Mad Raptor Productions, which specializes in publishing fiction. Um, my channel is mostly me trying to dance between sunbeams so that way I don't get blinded right now. Um, but if you are looking for like semi-educational videos, terror videos, that's on my channel. And I've got a book out. I got an audio book out. There's a link. Yeah. If you're looking to support me, you can leave a review. If Even if you don't like it, say it sucks. I'll take the review. It's fine. Mm. <laughs> That's me. Good job. Michelle. Michelle. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm trying to pull something up while I do this. Okay. I'm Michelle Schusterman. I'm a middle grade and young adult author. My YouTube channel is Writing Workshops and Traditional Publishing Talk. And... In the course of this live stream, when I started thinking about my virtual book club idea, I went to look at the book I have coming out in what I thought was April and discovered that it is actually coming out in January. I emailed my editor <laughs> during this live stream and realized that it was things got shuffled around a ton with all of my upcoming books because of COVID. Right. And it, it was originally supposed to come out in April, and then he told me it would still be a spring title. And I assumed that meant April, and either it's kind of both of our faults. But anyway, <laughs> bless you, and Michelle. Bless, bless you. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Let me make you big. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, right. There you go, right there. Oh, uh, no, not working. Sort of. There. Sort of. Oh, it's still trying to. Hold on. Let me see if I can find. It. Actually, Some Michelle. Money to love. Yeah, oh, I love that. It's a middle grade book. So if you have kids, it's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and blah blah blah. So yeah, <laughs> I, can't believe I, will, that. I will put a link to it in the description Thanks. below. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations on your January release. Thanks. Nothing like yeah. having a release of a book that you were not expecting. Well. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You guys are fantastic. I am Lisa Daly. This is my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. If you want to write a book you're super proud of and get it published, this is a fantastic place to check it out. All right. So that doesn't make any sense. That was like a, <laughs> I, I combined like seven things. Videos <laughs> to help you do that. Yay. Yay. All right. Thanks for being here, everybody. You guys are super, super awesome. Wait, we have one last question. How do you think authors can best take advantage no of the audience? Right. No, to right? <laughs> That's a really big question, but I feel like we should answer that next time. That's okay. a really good question. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna write it down and we're gonna answer that next time. In fact, let me take, hold on so I don't forget. We're gonna do like a screenshot <laughs> right this second. There, <laughs> I already, done. I already grabbed it for you. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Yay, you guys are awesome. <laughs> Mad Raptor, hashtag raw. All right, <laughs> you guys are great. I'm gonna go through the comments because you guys are fantastic. Oh my God, we missed you. <laughs> Yay, you guys are so awesome. Awesome. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. We'll see you next time. We're out.